I'm Deepa Schmelzer. Stay tuned. Taped with Rabbi Doug is next. We're going to see Rabbi Doug. We're going to see Rabbi Doug. We're going to see Rabbi Doug on your TV tonight. But Daddy, I want to watch Monday Night Football. Forget about Monday Night Football. There's no other thing we're going to watch on Monday but Rabbi Doug. Yeah, Rabbi Doug on TV tonight. We're going to see Rabbi Doug. Oh, everybody talk about Doug. Shalom and welcome to Taped with Rabbi Doug. Glad you could be with us today. We are here in the radio studio of Jeff Osias and the new Jewish wake up call. Jeff, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. And guest to today, here. also at the under, other end of the room, is a dear friend, Leah Averick. Welcome to the show, Leah. Thank you. And, um,. It's a pleasure to be here, and uh, Jeff, why don't you do the uh, new intro right here to your radio show while we're on the air. All right. This is the new Jewish wake-up call, and I am your host, Jeff Osias. And I uh, got the job because it said new Jewish wake-up call, and the host said Jeff Osias, and I was the only one that I knew that had that name, so (laughs) kind of fit in. Uh, Leah is a author, a poet. A journalist? No, not a journalist. Not a journalist? A mother, a mother-in-law. Okay, mother and mother-in-law. Grandmother. And, whoa, okay. <laughs> Get closer to the mic so we okay. can hear you. Or you don't want and to. And Leia's, Leia's son has been on my TV show before. So this is like he's saying on my TV show, um, Moshe Averick. And uh, actually very popular. A lot of people have actually watched him on the internet as well. And... Uh, at www.tvrabbi.com, where all of our, uh, most all of our shows are also over the internet. And uh, Leia, it is a pleasure to have you on the show as well. And uh, when Jeff and I talked about doing the radio and TV shows simultaneously, I said we should have a guest on the show. (laughs) And uh, what a perfect guest to have. Uh, Leia is a social worker and uh, a very uh, well-known person in the Chicago Jewish community. And uh, a this is activist. and a political activist. Let me let me hold up her book here on the on the camera. This is Leah's book, and uh, it's called "Don't Call Me Mom: How to Improve Your In-Law Relationships." And Leah, I presume that you got along with your in-laws famously. You can presume that I did with my my first set of in-laws, my parents' in-law, and. Um, I hope I'm learning to be uh, getting along with my other sets of in-laws better and better. And this is her other book here, How In-Laws Relate, It's All Relative, by Leah Schifrin Averick. And Leah, this was your first book, right? The first edition. This was your first book, and and that's your second book. Uh, But but they're similar subjects. Are they, is one an updated version? Before I go on, before I go on, or you go on, I want to tell you a third version is coming out with Rabbi Tversky. The addition of Dr. Rabbi Tversky, I'm very proud to say, who's a friend of yours, yeah, that's right? right. That's Our right. host. And I, I, maybe a friend of yours. I too. also know him too, sure. Yes. Absolutely. Very nice, very nice. Um, so, Leah, tell me something. You who write about in law relationships, what makes you an expert in in laws to write a book about it? Because, uh, you know, you are a mother in law also. And I want to know, do you relate to your, uh, your children's spouses the way that you teach here in the book? And did you relate to your husband's parents the way that you teach here in the book? I, when I finished writing the book, I learned a lot. And I've made, I, I, I call, you ask me about what makes me... Uh, an expert. Right. I'm an expert because I think I've made more mistakes than anybody <laughs> being an in-law. That's, uh, that's my first... Uh, uh, qualification. And uh, in order to obviate those mistakes, I began to do research because there's no, there was no research ever done on the book. And one of my, and then yet on the other hand, paradoxically, I have to say what uh, Chaim Litzato said. I have not come here to tell you what, what you don't know. I've come here to tell all of you what you do know already. And uh, what I have gleaned and learned has been from people I've interviewed. I've learned so much from from the people who shared their in-law stories with me. Uh, and uh, at first, I have to admit, the first edition, and I, I did not want to reveal any of my mistakes, 
the second edition, maybe some of them. Uh, you know through. which one I like? Okay, by which it? one? Tell me. What, and it really hit me is when you have when you're a parent to talk to your own child, not just the in-law. Because a lot of times a parent feels that if there's a financial problem or something like that, they should go to the spouse of the of the child, whether it be the, the girl or the guy. And, and all of a sudden, the... Uh, yeah, yeah, you can't the, blame your own child. Go to the spouse <laughs> and blame them for the problem. And, and then that becomes a, a feud in their house. And, mm -hmm. it's, uh, I, and I noticed the... And I started reading that one tonight, and I was, I was intrigued by it because I know that I had that happen with my mother who always got more involved in my ex-wife than she did with me, and I would kind of like feel, hey, I'm here. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> this is the lesson that I learned and, and emphasized in the second edition, that a husband and wife have to iron out, not have to, ought to iron out their own problems without involving their parents. And the parents certainly, uh, in the background, ought to, not sh should, ought to know if you have anything to say, Talk to your own child first. So let me play the Sutton's advocate and say, please, what if the in-laws are the problem? Uh, and very Whoa. often, you know, that is the cause of many divorces. Uh, sadly enough, in-law problems and money problems, and then, uh, then let's see, I don't know other problems, but those two are paramount causes of divorces. If the in-laws are the problem... Intimacy problems are probably a big well, one. They, intimacy problems are also a big cause of divorce, well, I think. Well, well intimacy, and, absolutely, because... When the when the young couple, the husband and the, the wife, don't don't have a uh, uh, don't have this actus, don't have this unity relationship between yes, thank you, the unity between one another, then then that's why it, that's part of the intimacy issue. They 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 aren't close enough to one another. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I want to I, I emphasize that over and over again, how a husband and wife. As, as the Torah says, correct me in my, uh, my uh, uh, quotation, Al kein tazov ish et beisavicho ve'etimecho, what's the word? And he should cling unto his wife. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That is such an easy thing to say. You and I could say it, but it's so hard to really uh, uh, sure. integrate mm -hmm. in your life. Sure, okay? sure. Well, we're, we're here on Taped with Rabbi Doug, and we are in the middle of a live radio broadcast over the internet as well, the new Jewish Wake Up Call, starring Jeff Osias, who's right here next to me. And our guest today is Leah Averick, who is a social worker and author. And uh, we're just so glad here on our TV show to, to be here at the new Jewish Wake Up Call. Let me, let me go from you to Jeff for a moment here. Jeff, now, the Jewish radio network, which was... Uh, over the airwaves here in Chicago, sort of folded a few years ago. Mm -hmm. But there was already a Jewish weekend radio show that you were involved in and so on. How did this all come about to begin with? How did Jewish radio start in Chicago and how did you get involved with okay. it? Okay, it was a kind of an odd story. Uh, I, my wife was shopping at the uh, grocery store on Tui. And uh, I happened to walk by a place that said uh, Torah Radio. And be, being a radio and television guy, I was intrigued by it, and I walked in, and I met uh, uh, one of the workers there, and, and the engineer, actually, uh, Michael Shoshone. Good old Michael. We all know and, Michael and here in town. And one of the top, 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 top. He's a great engineer and a great... Uh, great voice. Great voice, great voiceover person, too. Right, and uh, he's uh, unfortunately not doing what he uh, he does best but you know hey that's sometimes the way it works out yeah, but anyway i walked in and he and i said i introduced myself and i told him i work with wnew and and i work with uh, saturday night live well he rattled off a whole bunch of stuff that i couldn't even have told you but he filled me on a lot of stuff and he says you know you got to meet my boss so i uh, i came back and i met the guy who ran it and uh, I said to him, this thing is amazing. You know, if you really have something going around here. It was amazing. And I started hanging out, and uh, I started producing a show called The Chavarusa with uh, Kalman Warch and, oh gosh, I can't remember, he did the uh, other rabbi, or two rabbis, and they happened to have been Chavarusas. Mm -hmm. And they were funny, and they did things, and I cut it down to like a half hour show, and that started. Then somebody said, hey Jeff, uh, why don't you, we have an opening, why don't you go on the air? And 
never been on the air before. And then I started the, uh, the Jewish wake-up call, and then uh, they, they needed another hour or half hour, and then that became a, a second show, became Jeff Osias' show, which was a different type, it was a, more of a political show. Uh -huh. And from there, um, they, uh, the Torah radio, I was happened to have been in Eretz Yisrael, and as a matter of fact, I had a guest all set for when I was coming back from Eretz Yisrael, and it was going to be uh, Dick, uh, Dick, um, the, um, the prosecutor, uh, the prosecutor. Dick Devine. Dick, Dick Devine. Dick Devine. Devine. My, uh, my, my guest. Former uh, state's attorney of Illinois, Dick for, Devine. Right, and he was going to be my guest, and I get the call saying that. Who's also, by the way, a Rogers Park resident. Yes, uh -huh. yes, I know his, okay. I guess his brother-in-law or cousin okay. or something, who was the head of president of the union. And, as a matter of fact, I don't have the picture with me. You had him on my show before also. Yeah. Because I got a picture of the president of the union and uh, President Obama and myself. Uh oh, I've seen that picture, yeah. yeah. And, and I'm quite proud of that one. And, you know, so out of you all, had, the, all the presidents I've ever worked with, he's the only picture I got. So. There you go. Uh, so you had Dick Devine on the show. Yeah, I didn't have him oh, because you didn't. I had you to cancel to. him out and I couldn't get him back again. Oh. So uh, we're hoping... Great that, guy. Yeah, I, I understand that. And so... I did not want to see Torah Radio die, and they had the Saturday morning slot, and it would have been too much for me to take on a whole week. Saturday morning slot? No, night. Oh, Saturday I'm night slot. Saturday, Saturday night, night slot. I, I just no, wanted to get no, that clear. No, 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 the Mose Shabbat. Shabbat slot. Not on Shabbos. <laughs> not yet. Not on Shabbos. So uh, I started doing it on Friday, on Saturday night, excuse me, after Shabbos. And uh, it got a little hairy in the winter time. Oh, sure, so tough I, to get there and get it going. They, they could, would play my uh, my theme song, and I'd become flying in <laughs> Mutsi Shabbos and sit down, and we'd, we'd go with it. But it became an hour show, and it became an hour and a half show. And uh, then oh, this wow. evolved, okay. and uh -huh. so uh, it was uh, kind of neat. What, what's up? Huh? Oh, okay, here. All right. Hey. There's the picture. Let's see if we can uh, show that picture up there if it'll kind of dark. But uh, how did you get that? There's the picture. There it is. Wow. So anyway, uh, let's try it one so more time. Now's the time for me to tell an in-law joke. Sure. Can I bring in All right. We're in gonna have an in-law joke, joke now so from. Uh, oh, why an only in-law joke that I heard from my, from a Russian shiva from Eretz Israel? He said, uh, with this British accent, he said, "How do you treat in-laws?" He said buy a house by the river and ask them to drop in. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's the other, the, there you the go. There you go. Joke that I'll tell you. There we go. But I would like to still like to tell you about uh, some other, uh, I told you what, what I know is what I've learned from other people. I'd like to tell you uh, what Maneket Rifka, another, another uh, uh, writer said, um, she, and creative thinker said, uh, the, the peace will come to the world when when mothers-in-law get along with daughters-in-law. And um, have you can can you fathom that? No. Peace will get along with the because you know why when there's peace Don't in the world. <laughs> my mother-in-law loves me better than she does her own daughter. That's wonderful. I don't blame her. I mean, I don't know your wife that well, but I, I'm getting to know you, and I can see you're very likable. Anyway, that's so I always like to give credit to the 16th century Yiddish writer who said, peace will come to the world when mothers-in-law get along with daughters-in-law. Oh. And then another man, uh, the Chazonish said, uh, there's a special seat in heaven for women who are good to their mothers-in-law. Mm. And he says, it's still empty, that seat. Anyway, you can, you can gasp if you want to, but... Uh, it certainly makes an impact just talking about it, uh, thinking about that phrase. All right, I like this thing by Martin Berber. Uh, a real, uh, real living is meeting when you, when we are persons uh, to one another. We are not objects to be experienced, nor and it to be used. But in, but uh, and I and in thou standing in mutual and recognition uh, and relation. Now, why did that come putting in where you put that? The, I, I couldn't catch. Well, what chapter? Let's see. That's what married chapter. children. Uh, oh, the in-law triangle. I mean, oh, that's the therefore. Um, 
I think it becomes, uh, this is referring to a chapter that I have on see me as I am. Uh -huh. Because very often, very often, uh, we, we look at one another uh, not as, <laughs> as you really are, but as I Imagine you. Right, or what I'd like you to be. Wow. Uh, we, we don't see the, sometimes this is what happens with, uh, with, uh, uh, well, I, I'm relating experiences. Mm -hmm. One son-in-law said, my father-in-law wanted me to be a commodities broker. I don't want to be a commodities broker. Mm -hmm. I want to be a writer. <clears throat> That's that, that was one young man, and one woman said, my mother-in-law doesn't believe that I'm an editor. She thinks I'm a secretary. Mm -hmm. Why doesn't she believe that I'm an editor? So the, these are the kind of uh, yearning, uh, not yearning, these are the kind of complaints that, uh, that, that caused me to, to quote Martin Buber, uh -huh. if you really try to understand who the other person is. Just can't, uh, just realize when yeah. I worked in radio, and uh, this I noticed in Chicago, not New York, but uh, there was a uh, co comedic radio like uh, um, Bob and Ray, yeah, local, yeah, yeah. Our, our local ones, and they they were called Craven and Finch, and um, uh, D. Finch is one, Gene Claven. He brought his father-in-law around to the studios to show him what he does, and he, they, you know, and he, made, he always made a good living because these guys were at the top of the heap. And um, he showed his father-in-law. This is when the father-in-law sat through the show and everything, turned around to him and said, "When are you going to get a job?" Huh. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> we're, yeah, Jeff, yeah. we're we're here on the new Jewish wake-up call on the radio and taped with Rabbi Doug. One of the features of the new Jewish wake-up call is Jewish music. And I have great pleasure in our uh, half-hour show to uh, invite on your own son. Um, oh, how uh, wonderful. And Zevio Sias, who's going to sing for us today. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Zevio Sias.
I just want to tell you, um, Jeff, that one of the things about this show, which kind of connects it to Taped with Rabbi Doug in many ways, is that your show is the only Jewish radio show emanating out of the Chicago area on a weekly basis. And mine is the only Jewish TV show emanating out of the Chicago area on a weekly basis. So we have this in common and, and this common bond as, as being on each other's shows as well. Um, tell me something, Jeff, now with, with Jewish radio and so on, where do you think the idea of using the internet as, a, as another forum for Jewish radio to kind of reach around the world goes? Where are your, where are your listeners around the world that you're aware of right now Israel. outside of Chicago? Israel. We have listeners yeah, in Israel, Israel. We have who him. can watch us on TVRabbi.com also. <laughs> and he's not here now, but we have Mr. Chin or Mr. Chung, I think his name is, who is in Korea. Korea. Uh, we do come from the block, from from Russian block, whatever countries they uh -huh. are. There's a few people there. Uh, so we, we have a great gathering. We have a, you know, obviously we are all over the country, in California, down in Mexico. Uh, so we have about two thousand people listening right now. It's wonderful, and one of the one of the great things is that your show is not for profit, and my show is not for profit, and we're here to serve the community. Isn't that uh, isn't that a That's great wonderful. thing? Can oh, yeah. I ask you okay. if if Mr. Chun if Mr. Chun misses you right now, mm -hmm. can he listen to you later? Is there uh, okay. a way? Okay, I just him? got word tonight. I just got word tonight, Leia, that uh, there will be a website put up. For people to uh, catch on to, uh, and w when we get it, and when it's in, in uh, service, um, uh, Reb uh, Ephraim down in Atlanta. This is the uh, that's the beauty of all of this. It's yeah. coming out of Atlanta right now, oh, really? because right. that's the the hub. They're also working on trying to get us on satellite. That that wow. would be great. And wow. I'm impressed. you know, and and one of the things that I was looking forward to being over the internet. And, and had the uh, honor and privilege of, of getting that way is because uh, most of the networks that carry me are not on satellite, so not everybody was able to carry it and, and watch it around the world. But now, whether they're in Israel, whether they're in uh, New York, in Los Angeles, in uh, China, you know, China mm -hmm. you know, wherever you are around the world, uh, you can watch Taped with Rabbi Doug at tvrabbi.com. And if you want to email us, of course, you can email us at info at tvrabbi.com. And I will be sure to get back to you. And if you want to uh, email Jeff, you can inf email me at info at tvrabbi.com. And I'll be happy to pass it on to him. And I'm sure he'll get back to you. Hear from the new Jewish wake-up call on the radio live from Chicago all over the world. And our guest today is author and social worker Leah Everick. And here she is over here. Leah, your, your third book is a, a third in the series? Or is it a... Uh, a a book which kind of updates what you've said before. Well, it uh, I guess would, what what enhances the book will be Dr. Rabbi Tversky's psychiatric insights. Uh -huh. I, I hope that I had some insights, but he's going to really uh, enlarge them and uh, talk about things that I I wasn't competent to talk about. He, he'll talk about transference, for example, in depth. I think that's one of the things he's he's going to add on to it and. Uh, and also, uh, I think, increase my readership, just oh. like you intend to, oh, yeah. to uh, increase your audience. I hope I'll have a larger audience because I have the honor of, of uh, being uh, co-authored by, by Dr. Twist. And well, now everybody in the world will be able to watch you on the Internet at <laughs> www.tvrabbi.com. And hopefully... Uh, you know, when the book's out, you Dr. never know. Tversky That's right. Too, Dr. That's right. Sure. Um, Jeff. Yes. Who do you think was your most famous guest you've had on the air, or the one that excited you the most all right, as a radio uh, host? Uh, a couple of them. Well, first of all, Rabbi Tversky was an amazing, amazing guest. He was supposed to be on for five minutes, and he went the full hour and a half. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And he added so much. And uh, it's Rabbi Dr. Abraham Tversky, yes, by the way, for yes. those who aren't aware. MD uh, Rabbi, author, author, doctor, and uh, incredible, incredible years. Rabbi. Yeah, yes. the, Heinz, the, the Heinz Rabbi. Yeah. <laughs> and who else? Yeah. And uh, he was a great inspiration to me uh, in my early days of uh, being from and mm -hmm. making the journey. Uh, and I also had the great honor of being like the uh, opening act to him when he spoke. And it was like, well, you know, like, you, you know, when you do something like that, you go, well, why did you pick me? And, uh -huh. and he says, just show Famous radio host, yeah, <laughs> come on. 
So uh, it was kind of an amazing, amazing translation. He was there. Nate, Nate Clay, believe it or not, was good, a good, very good guest. Uh -huh. uh, but he was talking about <clears throat> genocide all over the world uh -huh. and how he got into it and how he be he was uh, sidekick to uh, to uh, um, to Jesse Jackson. Mm -hmm. And he wound up with the PLO and the whole. Like, yeah, I, he'd, yeah. like he said, he tried to say like I don't know anybody, but I just happen to follow him around the world and <laughs> stuff like that. But uh, the other one that w was most recent that I enjoyed very much was Mr. Keys uh -huh. when he was running for senator. Uh -huh. And right in the middle of the interview, everybody called him a buffoon. But I was listening to him very closely, and all of a sudden, I just turned my mic off and I let him talk, and I leaned over to my producer, Dr. Julia Rath, and I said, listen to this, what he's saying. He is saying what the GOP can't say on the air. He was going after the grassroots in a way that nobody else could do it. And, and it was amazing. So you see why he was picked to do what he did, and, and it was a wonderful education. I've had Rabbi Shkup on. We talked about uh, end of life. It's also been on my show, and you can catch it on the internet. <laughs> and 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 and, and uh, uh, Rabbi um, Moshe Soloveitchik. Nice. Uh, we were doing. I had uh, a doctor on talking about end of life, and uh, you know w whether we could and whether we couldn't. And whenever I had a, a something like that, I would always have like a doctor on. Because I'm not. And a rabbi to talk about the halacha. Exactly. Exactly. To get a balance on mm -hmm. whatever that is. And say, we we say here at the Jew, New Jewish Wake Up Call that whatever you're thinking, that's what we're saying. And we we run with our blinders on. That's great. Because well, we're trying to get. Out of, I see you watching. Wonderful. Yeah, we're, we are we are running near the end of the show here for me. And I just want to once again thank you for having us on the New Jewish Wake Up Call, Jeff Osias. Thank you so much, Leah Everett. Much success with your books, and uh, you. I hope we can all relate to our in-laws uh, better than we do now. I want to uh, invite back for the close of the show. Our, our dear friend and your son, yes. uh, Zevo Sias, who is going to sing for us one more time. Remember, if you want to check out our show on the web or check out our website, www.tvrabbi.com, taped with Rabbi Doug. If you want to in email us, info at tvrabbi.com. I want to thank Jeff Osias, Leah Averick. I want to thank the new Jewish Wake Up Call. And I want to thank all of you for being with us. And once again, shalom, everyone. Hope to see you next time. Same place, same time, right here on Taped with Rabbi Doug. This is Zevi Osias. Hey, yeah.